Anissa Coy here with Firehouse Education and this week's Ask Anissa video column. And this week our question came in from Jason and I just have to say, Jason, you get the prize for the best question that I have been asked in a really long time. Here is Jason's question. Hey Anissa, I have a question for you. Everyone is always asking you what to do, but I guess I'm a little different. What I want to know is what would you tell me not to do when just getting into content restoration? I mean, what's the pitfalls that you see others fall into that if you could warn a newbie like myself about would save me lots of time, money, stress, failure, or whatever? Thank you so much, Jason. No, Jason, thank you. That, like I said, is the best question I have been asked in a really long time, and here's what it is. I would tell you not to run out and spend 50, 60, 80, $100,000 on equipment before you've even taken a single training class in content restoration. And the reason that I would tell you that is not that the equipment's not important, because it is, but you can get into contents restoration without spending that kind of money on equipment. The other thing that I find is so many times when someone goes out without any prior training in contents and understanding of how to do the work correctly, they wind up spending tens of thousands of dollars on equipment that wasn't necessary. They just don't need all of that when they first get started. And you have to ask yourself some questions like, are you gonna process electronics in-house? Are you gonna process your soft goods in-house? By that I mean the laundry. Are you gonna sub those items out? There's just a lot of things to know before you go out and spend that kind of money on equipment. And I've seen so many newbies that will do that and they not only spend that kind of money on equipment, but they go in debt for that equipment. So please don't do that. You are shackling yourself and setting yourself up for failure. The reason that the training is so important is on so many levels. One, again, like I said, what all types of content restoration are you gonna do in-house, okay? The other is what size, what's the design of your content facility and what size and area are you dealing with? Which by the way, is another big mistake that I see. A lot of restoration companies just getting into contents, they make their cleaning warehouse, it's way too big. The layout is way too big, not efficient, tons of wasted space uh, and steps in the process, which takes down their profit margin, okay? So understanding that the equipment is important, okay? There are pieces that you absolutely need to do content successfully, I believe. However, understanding the marketing, knowing how to get the jobs in the door is more important, in my opinion, than the equipment, okay? Understanding what systems you need to have in place to be able to do that content job successfully, again, definitely important. You can have all the state-of-the-art equipment that you want, spend all the money that you want on that equipment in your warehouse, but if you don't know how to get the jobs and you don't know how to properly process those jobs and you don't have systems in place to make sure that you're efficient, that, that equipment's really not going to do anything but empty your bank account, okay? So to go out, if you're going, you feel like you want to get into contents or you're going to get into contents, go out and take some classes. Classes that will teach you how to get the jobs. Classes that will teach you how to do the technical side. Classes that will teach you the processes and procedures that you need in place to understand the psychology that you have to deal with when you're helping your client through such an emotional situation. So, and, and there's definitely pieces of equipment that I prefer over others, absolutely. So Jason, if you wanna have some more conversation about that, don't hesitate to shoot me another email and give me your phone number in there. I'll give you a call and we can chat about that. Okay, well, I hope you all enjoyed this question just as much as I did. And I thank you, Jason, for taking the time to send it to me. So I want you all to do that now. If you have questions for me, be sure and email anisa at firehouseeducation.com. And be sure that you are subscribed to rnrmagonline.com's e-newsletter so that you get this and lots of other goodies in your email inbox every Friday. And on that note, maybe I will feature your question in next week's Ask Anissa video column.